Hey everybody, welcome to AP Stats. We're doing a um, two proportion Z test today. All right, this is kind of the one to me that's like the hardest or has this little extra piece. So this is the one, it's the only time we use P pooled, our pooled proportion. I'll talk about that when we get there. Okay, so, but we only do, again, one more time, we only pool our data on a two proportion Z test, not interval, just this one situation. So it's hard to, to remember that. Also, you'll notice that when we work on our calculator, sometimes it asks you if you would like to pool your data, okay, and we always say no or just leave that alone, all right? But it won't even ask you on the two proportion Z test if you want to pool it. It does it automatically because you have to, all right? So you don't even have a choice in the matter. But that makes it hard to remember to put your work because it doesn't say anything about it in your calculator. So it's really easy to forget, okay? All right, so here's our problem. Suppose that in a simple random sample of 200 women, 5.6% were found to have green eyes. Another SRS simple random sample of 185 men found that 4.9% had green eyes. Do a higher percentage of women have green eyes than men? Assume conditions for a test of significance have all been met. Okay, so we're not gonna do that because today I wanna show you the conditions because I'm doing this video here. So we'll ignore that. Okay, our steps are the same as always. Step one, state the name of the test, hypothesis and define your parameter, all right, our name is a two-proportion z-test. Okay, when I come over here, this is kind of easy, guys. I have women and men, since the women have a higher proportion of green eyes, excuse me, I put them first, but the hypothesis always has to have parameters, their proportion that has to be two p's up there. We're doing the difference of two parameters, okay, and typically, almost always, guys, we're finding out if one is bigger than the other or if they're different or not. Okay, and where that transpires, like where that happens, is when the difference is zero. So if there was no difference, there would be, the difference would be zero when I subtract them. And we found a difference, maybe the women are higher. So we're gonna look at that, okay? But this is almost gonna be always zero right there. Okay, and then from your null, you just copy that. The only difference you have to do is put in the sign there. And we think the women minus the men. Notice we put the women first because they're higher. So a larger number minus a smaller, and if we think they're higher, that would be a positive result, it would be greater than zero. Since we put the larger one first, this will almost always be greater than zero as well, right? Okay, define the, um, the parameter, okay? Our parameter here is women and minus men there. So the proportion of women minus the proportion of men, that symbol represents the true difference in the proportion of men and women having green eyes. Okay, that's the way I like to do it. You could do, P of W and say that's the true proportion of, green, of women with green eyes and then do it separate. P with an M on the bottom would represent the true proportion of men with green eyes. And then you're subtracting those two. That'd be obviously the difference. But you could individually say them. I like to condense them right as little as possible into one. All right, we are gonna do our conditions, like I said. So um, even though it said we don't have to. Conditions, random sample. It said they were an SRS, a simple random sample. Notice I have two groups. I have to address both the groups, okay? So check, check. Independence, again, I have to address the men and the women. I like to combine them. You could do them separately. 200 men and 185 women, sorry, 200 women and 185 men are less than 10% of all men and women. That would suffice there. Okay, nearly normal. Oh, what P do I use, okay? Well, ideally, we're gonna do P pooled in a minute. Let's talk about that. All right, we are operating under the assumption always that the null hypothesis is true, and we're trying to disprove that, okay? All right, if the null was true, then the proportions are the same of men and women um, having green eyes. Sorry, I've been doing different problems today. Anyway, so if we're operating under that assumption that it's true, then the proportion of men and women with green eyes, it's equal. So we're wasting our time checking men and women separate, right? So we just combine it as one sample and say, well, this is the proportion of people we found with green eyes, men or women, it doesn't matter, right? Okay, so that's why we pool data. Okay, that's the best shot at a true proportion we have, acknowledging that that's true, all right? Now, I'm sure that you could use that in my nearly normal condition here, because now we have n times p and n times q, all right? But before you start a problem, you're supposed to check the conditions. Before you start a problem, you don't have the value of p pool, okay? so. You're checking it, like if you're really doing it in order, then you're gonna do your work after. So 
what we're going to do, what we normally do here, is use the p hat given in the problem because at the time, it's the best figure we have. For the women, it was 6%. Oh, maybe I'm wrong here, sorry. Oops, I got it right there. It was 0 0.056 for the women. All right, and I'll get the, the one minus that over on the other side. Okay, for the men, it was 0.049. So we'll use those p hat values in there because, like I said, at the time we conduct our samples, that's the only proportion that we have to go by before we do the pooled one. Okay, so I'm going to do 1 minus 0.056 to get the Q value, 0.944. Okay, and over here for the men, I have 0.049. 1 minus 0.049 is going to get me 0.951. Okay, and, and these are all supposed to be greater or equal to 10. That's our check. All right, I have 200 times 0.056. Let's do that. Okay, and down here it says 11.2. You can put 11. You can put 11 too. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and just put 11. I'm going to want that figure later as a whole number. All right, 200 times 0.944. Okay, they add, they total, like this is 100% of 200. If I have 11, this will be 189. Okay, what's important? Both are greater or equal to, or equal to 10. All right, my man, here we go. 185 times 0.049. 9.065, that would be 9. Okay, and again, you'll watch that if I do that, these two will add to 185. 185 times 0.951 is going to get me 175.93. That would be 176. And if you add those, that's your 185. Again, you're not done until you say, oh, guess what? Both are greater or equal to 10. And I've met those conditions for the men and for the women. Okay? All right, let's continue on here. Calculations. Okay, again, we have to do P pooled here. I put my information here. Let's get P pooled right now. Okay, we saw that this is 11 successes out of the women, and we found that there were nine successes out of the men. We're just adding our totals. We really found 20 successes, 20 people with green eyes out of 385 if they're all the same, and that's approximately 5% when I do that math. All right, next thing I have to do is find my expected difference here. And again, according to our hypothesis, we think it should be zero, but what did we find here? That the women minus the men was 0.056 minus 0.049, which is 0 0.007. That's our difference that we found in our problem, all right? And now I have to find the standard deviation. Okay, and here we use the pooled data. I have different groups, the women and the men. Okay, but we're assuming the proportions are the same from our hypotheses. So we pooled it and then we use 0.05 in there for both these. So 0.05 and then 0.95 would be the probability of not having green eyes. Okay, the reason we don't make it just one sample is because the fact that it's two samples, if we remember from our a long time ago, that two multiple events changes the standard deviation. I have to add those events together and then take the square root to get that new standard deviation. So two events, checking two groups differently is different than checking one group of 385 people. Let's get our standard error here, our standard deviation, excuse me, that's pooled, been pooled. Again, your calculator will use this. It won't say anything about it, but it's doing this work. All right, so 0 0.05 times 0.95 divided by 200 plus 0.05 times 0.95 divided by 185, that gets me 0 0.0222. That's my standard deviation for these groups of people that I have here, all right? Okay, according to our hypothesis, the true proportions, the difference should be zero, all right? And our standard deviation for this group would be 
2, 2. Notice we're assuming that they're the same to make it 0, and we assume they're the same to do our p pools. That's why we have that there. All right, what did we find, though? We got point zero zero seven, which lies over there. That's the difference in proportion that we found. And we're going to find the likelihood that you could get a result that far over or further if the true proportions were actually equal. All right, let's get our z-score. All right, our z-calculation is whatever we found in our problem here. It's our x value, what we got. In this case, it's 0 0.007 minus what it's supposed to be. What's the average supposed to be? The difference should be 0 divided by that standard deviation of 0 0.0222. All right, I'll go ahead and get that value. That's going to end up being 0 0.007 on top divided by 0 0.0222. And that gets me 0.32. We round the two places because if you're completing your um, problem as the AP people assume you are by looking up a Z table and calculate it, it only has two places. So we usually round our Z to two decimal places. All right. Okay, now here comes our problem. I'm asking you the probability that your samples, watch, the sample proportion of the women minus the sample portion of the men would be greater or equal to 0 0.007. Okay, what's the probability, if all this is true, that we get a sample that much or greater? All right, if we turned it into a Z table, a Z distribution, this equals the probability that, we need more room there, that Z is going to be greater than 0.32. Okay, I put the equal, it doesn't really matter because statistically it's the same value either way. Okay, but um, the APA people would like to see your Z-score calculation and have that there, even though I'm really not going to use it because they think, again, that you're going to look on a table and figure that out which you could, but that's the hard way and less accurate. We're going to go on our calculator and use the, the technology we have. So here we go. We're going to do a two-proportion z-test. So I'm going to go to stat, tab over to tests. I'm going to choose a two-proportion z-test, which is number six on there. Enter. Okay, it asks me for the values. People have trouble with this because they put the percentage in. Our women's our first group when we found we had 11 successes, no decimals there. 11 out of 200, our men was 9, our x2 value, the x value for the second group is 9, the n value is 185 for the men, and we think that the women is greater than the men. So we choose the greater than, and I don't think you can see my calculator, but um, I want to choose the hypothesis, and it should match my hypothesis up here. So greater than, I should choose greater than here. Let's go down and calculate it and get our p-value. Okay, my p-value is 0.3895. All right. Okay, um, there was no mention of p-value, so the under or excuse me, alpha level. So the understood alpha level is always 0 0.05. If no one said anything there, all right. And ours is 38, almost 39 percent. It is very high. Okay, if the p-value is low, is reject the hoe, right? So we do not have evidence to reject the hoe. All right. So here we go. Get our conclusion with the p-value of 0.3895 and an alpha level of 0.05, we do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis that the true difference in the proportion of men and women with green eyes is zero. Okay, they asked a question. They said, do green, do, let's go find the question before I say it wrong. Question was, do a higher percentage of women have green eyes than men? I need to make sure I answer that. We cannot say that a higher percentage of women have green eyes compared to men. Okay? All right, that's complete. You could probably get away without that sentence, possibly. Okay, but why take the risk? I mean, you get marked off a whole point out of four, possibly, for doing that when you could just add the sentence and be clear. All right? Okay, again, two proportion Z tests, the only time we pool our data. All right? And I would accept from you because I don't think there is a uniform agreement everywhere that you use the p-hats here, or I could use the p-pooled. The p-pooled is really better, but again, the idea is that you're doing the conditions to see if, if you can run the test, and you gotta check that before, then you only have the p-hats to do that condition, so they, that's what's typically done there, okay?
but I would accept the 0.05 used in there as well. All right, thank you very much, guys.